Hey everybody, I'm going to make a real quick video here about uh, controlling the print parameters on the New Matter Mod T 3D printer. Um, I'm going to be using an application called Cura and then of course the New Matter print tool. So here we go. Um, first thing you need is you need a slicer and the slicer that I'm using is called Cura. Um, so you can download it um, online. I'll put the link in the uh, description below. Uh, the reason I chose Cura was because um, New Matter had a print profile already set up. So what I did is I emailed them. Um, their email address is support at newmatter.com and I asked them for the Cura profile and they sent me this INI file. Um, so what a slicer is, is essentially if you've ever seen a 3D print, it prints in layers. The slicer actually defines how the printer is going to print all of those layers and allows you to control the, the print parameters. So I'll go over a couple of those right now. So once you have um, Cura open, what you want to do is go open the profile that New Matter sent you. So it's right here. Hit open. And essentially what that profile does is it defines um, all of these, these different print parameters. So like the layer height. Um, I usually go with a finer layer height. Um, I don't really play around with the shelf thickness or uh, retraction or anything like that. I do play around with the fill density. So let me show you what that does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a, an STL uh, file. Um, I've used STL files that I've created in Tinkercad, uh, ones that I've downloaded from Thingiverse and other ones that people have made through, um, you know, like... Um, different 3D modeling uh, applications. So they, it really seems to work with anything. So we're gonna load model. And I have this Raspberry Pi sleeve. And uh, go to the normal mode, actually. Uh, right here, what you have is you have a bunch of different um, view modes. So really I use normal and this layers. And this layers is actually gonna show you how the um, how the printer is actually going to print. So this is layer 79. So if I hold the control key down and move the mouse, I can actually rotate the object and look at it. So let's play around with this fill. This fill is going to control basically these yellow marks here. Right now we're at 25%. Let's change it to 50 and see what happens. So it's actually going to render it. It takes a minute. There we go. So you can see it's much more dense. That's not necessarily a, a good thing. Um, for certain things it might be be helpful. For example, I printed another Raspberry Pi case before and it had um, screw standoffs where you could actually put screws in. And when I printed it at 25%, when I went to put the screw in, the screw actually kind of like tore the plastic because it was, it was hollow. So then I did another print and I bumped the fill density up to 100%. And uh, I didn't have that problem because it was a solid piece of plastic rather than something that was hollow. Um, but for something like this, I would probably keep it between 20 and 20, I don't know, 20 and 30%. Um, so that's what that setting is. Uh, I also play around with um, the support type. Um, if you see here, we'll wait for that to render. Here we go. If you see here, there's a cavity. So if I change this, uh, sometimes these menus act funny. So if I take the support type out, you'll notice that it is now printing this. It's probably hard to see because of the material, but essentially right here, it's printing a, I don't know if you can see it. It's not really drawn nicely. Let me, let me go down here. See, it's printing, it's printed this right here wide open as opposed to before when I had the support type specified, what it was doing was filling that with this little piece of material that doesn't really touch each side, it touches the bottom, but um, this is acts as a scaffolding so that when the printer comes over and has to, to print over top of, of this area, it has something to, to support the material. It actually works quite well, and this is really easy to pop out. It, it really doesn't leave any residue on your print at all once you take it out. So I, I normally do a support type um, 
and there's parameters that you can specify, you know, how many degrees uh, overhang until it prints that and so on and so forth. So I would recommend just playing around with that. The other thing I use is I often print with a brim. And you'll see here in a second what the brim does. So there you go, right there. So this right here is is the brim, and it, the reason that it prints that is for this for this object, being that it's quite long and straight. If I were to print it without a brim, chances are that one or all of my corners would start to kind of curl up just a little bit, enough where it's not a truly flat piece. So if you print a brim, it kind of helps hold it down. Now you'll notice that the brim kind of kind of uh, curls up a little bit but that doesn't matter because this easily you know is cut off or even snaps off just by bending it back and then you just touch it up with like a I don't know razor blade or or some sandpaper so um, that's basically all I do to control the printing so again the layer height the fill density and the support and the platform adhesion type uh, other than that I kind of leave everything else the same um, it's really nice. Like I said, you can hold control down and you can rotate your object. Um, your, your wheel, um, can zoom in and zoom out. Um, you know, you can rotate an object. So let's see how do you do rotate right here. Let's go to normal view. So you can rotate it. You know, if you want to adjust it, you can also, um, you know, load load multiple objects on the platform. So if I wanted to print two of these, I can go and hit load and open up another one. And now I have two there. And I can just keep adding them and adding them. You know, un until I can't fit anymore. So you could print many objects. Uh, but let's clear the platform and just load one model. Okay. So now that I have it loaded, now I've, I've changed all everything I want to change. I'm going to go to File and save G-Code. And G-Code is what the, the Mod T takes. Um, it's, it's kind of like an instruction set that tells the Mod T how to actually print your object. So I'm going to do Save G-Code. Save it where I save it. And then I'm going to go to the Mod, D, Mod T printer tool. Uh, let's see, is mine connected right now? Mine is disconnected. Let me get it connected. Hold on. Okay, so now my printer is connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Settings, Advanced Mode, Print File. I'm going to go and find my G-Code. Hit Open. You'll notice it's going to upload to the printer on bigger files. It does take longer. Um, so once it's uploaded, you hit the button on the front and you hit print and you get your object. So that's basically it. I would appreciate it if you guys would like the video. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you, if you like what you see. I'll be adding more videos. And please be sure to leave any questions or comments below and I'd be happy to get back to you. Um, all right. Happy printing, guys. Take care.